Hi, John Spark here and welcome to the Best European River Cruising APT presentation. Today I'm going to be talking with Joe Ellis, the State Manager of APT, who has been on this exact cruise that we're talking about. The cruise we're talking about today is the Amsterdam to Budapest or Budapest to Amsterdam, the magnificent Europe it's called. Why I decided to feature this is because a lot of our clients, or most people in Australia, usually will go on this cruise as a first up river cruise. And what we wanted to demonstrate to you is what we would have normally been able to found if you had to come into one of our presentations in the office. And we used to run these quite regularly, and a lot of people would come in. We looked at it and said, let's make it more easier for people like yourself to view without having to come to our office. So we're pretty much replicating the same sort of presentation that we did there. Now, at the end of this presentation, we've got a special deal where you're going to save quite significant money on airfares. So if you stick around to the very end, you're going to be very happy if a river cruise is on your plate. And if it's not on your plate, that's fine. Hopefully you'll get a good idea of what river cruising is about, and if it does become something that you want to do, you've had the benefit of coming to a presentation. And of course, at the end of this, you can ask, leave your questions or comments at the bottom, and we will promise to respond to those within 25 minutes. So I'm going to cut it over to Joe now. Thanks for joining us, and do enjoy. Joe's been on this cruise, and he's got a lot of personal experience on it, and it's kind of the, the benchmark cruise that most Australians will see advertised, even though there's a lot of other choices. It is the one that is attracting all the new ships and, and most of the uh, interest from the media and travelling public. So... Let's cover it off in as much detail as you uh, feel is needed, Joe. And during the course of this, I'll ask a few questions as I see them come up along the way. And then at the end of it, you can perhaps let us know about uh, any of the special deals that could be still available based on uh, where things are at. So, Joe, over to you. Great. Thanks so much, John. Yeah, the Magnificent Europe has been so popular for us. I think it's a great duration for Australian passengers because it's that 15-day um, and of course, there's those optional add-ons as well, um, having extra three nights in Paris or an extra three nights in Prague, which are both amazing cities. So it um, can be an 18 or a 21 day. And we just find that it's such a long way to go from Australia back to get to Europe. You want to make, make the best of it and have a really, really nice, relaxing cruise. Uh, we do have some seven-night option cruises available as well. But um, we find that after a few nights, you start to settle in, relax and really enjoy the pace of, of cruising. For 2014, we've got some, a new thing which we're actually calling the Royal Experience. And what that actually means is that um, basically it's a combination of all these different things as far as fantastic food and probably one thing that a lot of people don't think about with um, small ship river cruising is the fact that you could have, you know, six different or seven different dining experiences. So you might only have, you know, 50 people dining with you at a time. So it's really lovely experience. It's very much um, made fresh to order. We also dock every day, so all the produce is fresh as well. So fantastic food. You've got to forget the diets on river cruising because the food is fantastic. Mm -hmm. We've also got um, beautiful river ships as well and a lot of choice of cabins, which has been really, really popular for our, for our market. It depends on how much time you spend in your cabin, but I'll go through all the different grades that you can choose from. It's lovely to have a beautiful ship, but at the same time, people are going there to see Europe. So we make sure all the sightseeing's included, tailor-made as far as the passenger as well. So we'll go through that in a little bit more detail as well. And the service, everyone talks about when I actually see them, because we have branded cars, so we see people in car parks and shopping centres, and they always talk about the people that they meet and the staff and um, how amazing they were. And they took any concerns that they had were actually with traveling away. So it made a massive, massive difference. So um, they certainly make the difference in your holiday. That gives you a breakdown. And thank goodness we got these beautiful rivers to see through Europe. So when you're actually doing the magnificent Europe, you're doing the Amsterdam all the way to Budapest or the reverse itinerary. And it's been so popular. It's only been since, goodness me, the actual mine Danube Canal was completed in 1992 and took around 300 years altogether to construct it properly. So it's about 172 kilometres long, and you've got 123 bridges you go under in this journey and 16 different rocks. So it's a really great experience. Of course, if passengers have already done that trip and so absolutely love to want to do something a little bit different, then we've also got the, the Seine River also in the north of, of France and also the, um, the Rhone as well in the south of France. Of course, going over to Russia, then we certainly have St. Petersburg to Moscow to cruise between. 
also in that beautiful Mediterranean river, you've got the Duro River also in Portugal on the left-hand side. So lots and lots of choice, which is great because we've got such a popular product here and people want to do it again and again. We've also got with our river cruising, I think the main thing to remember is it's fully inclusive. And our passengers love that because they probably had that trip before when they'd come back and they said, my credit card is now you know, $3,000 in the red because I didn't expect to pay additional for these different bits and pieces. Whereas with APT, pretty much everything is included and at the end of the presentation, we'll go through what's actually not included and it's only a tiny few things. So um, you end up being able to budget, come back and say, had a great cruise, enjoyed it and it didn't cost me anything additional. And it's relaxing. I want to add in there, yeah. sorry, Joe, to cut sure, across yeah. you. I do want to add, I want to add in there that... Uh, We've had clients come back and have literally said, you could get away with spending as little as $50 on top of the whole cruise if you wanted to. It's really very easy. Everything is included in, in every sense of the word and uh, pretty much the only thing that you'll buy will be your souvenirs and stuff off of the ship. So uh, yeah, it's not very often that they, these claims are actually backed up by clients coming back and telling us that you know when you budget for these then it's literally it's covered so Absolutely. yeah it's great and it's i think it's a bit addictive because everyone says i want to travel with apt again so that's why we have to come up with all these different destinations all the time john so we actually um can offer something different because i say i love the way that you guys organize all of that and make it really simple and um and relaxing as well as i was mentioning before so really relaxing it's not an endurance test so you don't have that situations of getting up early, having breakfast, bags out at this time, all that sort of stuff. It's very much, if you want to sleep in, go for it. You have even have uh, late rises breakfast for you as well as early rises breakfast. So it pretty much caters for everybody. And of course, no traffic jams. So you're unpacking once and you're not sitting on motorways trying to get through Europe with all these different traffic and things like that. So it's a really beautiful way to go. And that's all our crew. Hey, Joe. Go, go ahead. Sorry, before you leave that last photo, before you leave that last photo, uh, who's the lady in the middle? That is Louise McGeary. Uh, actually, now she's just been married, uh, Louise Tandy. So that's actually Jeff McGeary's daughter. Uh, she's involved in the company, and Jeff McGeary is a handsome young man on the left-hand side there. And um, as you mm -hmm. know, it's an Australian company. So um, Jeff actually pretty much built it up from having one coach in Melbourne. And um, has built it up to now being, you know, one of the most successful cruise and um, and touring companies in Australia. So um, and also his son oh, works in the business as well. I actually thought that was you. She looks a lot like you. Oh really? <laughs> 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 I'm going to highlight everybody. There's who he's talking, but never mind. Okay. <laughs> no drama. That, yeah. That's cool. That, uh, thank you. Absolutely. And um, that's how all the people are actually involved in making this very much a fantastic cruise for you as well. So you have the history team. And I found that um, especially cruising through, um, you know, doing the Amsterdam to Budapest, as well as the Russian cruise was amazing as far as their history and actually hearing it from their point of view as well. So that was really amazing stuff, as well as the local guides that you meet every day. So there is no day of cruising without actually having a tour. There's always something to do every day. So you certainly have those included. And of course, the captain and crew that you get to know pretty well. And actually the waiters are fantastic and you end up trying to follow the waiter, I guess, that um, becomes your favorite. They know exactly what, you know, what you, your diet requirements are and all those sort of things. And if you like a, you know, a gin and tonic or whatever for dinner and they um, become very much part of a bit of a family. So it's a really nice feeling on board the ship. And I think what probably what makes it most popular, John, is the fact that it is about choice. It's not about having to be on a coach and continuing seeing the same thing with the same people and that sort of stuff. It's very much about, you know, you have do what you want on the ship. It's very much a floating hotel. You decide when you get up, you know, what sort of things you want to get involved in during the day. If you want to do touring, if you don't want to, either way, it's all included. And, of course, the fantastic meals throughout the day as well. So they're all included. So up to you exactly what you'd like to do. For our Royal Experience, oh, yes, go ahead, oh, Ben. Oh, cut across your hair, sorry. That, that photo showed quite youngish looking people on there. Would you probably have the time to re let us know what, what are the age groups or brackets on the cruises? Because I know they're getting much younger, but I also know that you can get you know, quite elderly as well. So have you got a bit of an indication of the mix now? 
it's pretty much I'll find that um, from doing the cruises and in our information sessions, probably around the 55 to 75 sort of age group, I guess. So it's um, that sort of age group, I guess, has the time to actually get away for a two or three week period. Uh, we find that the families, because the ships aren't actually equipped with, um, you know, kids clubs and things like that, they won't get the young family so much. It's more probably the people who are about to retire or have retired and want to just relax mm -hmm. and, and enjoy a cruise. So it's pretty much that 55 to 75 sort of age group. What I like about it as, as well, John, is the fact that, um, you know, because you've got such a different age group actually traveling together, um, people, we actually had a triathlete on, gosh, last year, and he was loving it because he could grab one of the complimentary bikes and do his touring around, around the towns and things like that. Whereas we also have all of the walking groups as well. So we had a fast-paced walking group which does things comprehensively mm -hmm. and really quickly. Then we had the um, the gentle walk, as we call it. So if you've you know, injured your knee like I did last year, then you could actually go to the gentle walkers and just do things slowly and actually not hold anybody up and just do the highlights. And, of course, you've got two medium groups as well. So it ca even though you've got different age groups on there, it's sort of, I guess, the touring caters for different uh, fitness levels as well. So um, at least you won't be held up or you won't feel like you're holding other people up as well. And on to the lovely man with the other champagne there, welcoming our guests on board. That is actually when you go into the Twin Balcony Suites. And he's actually, what, see, we actually have a butler service, which is great to actually have that available on the um, on the ships. Some guests, even though they, of course, can have it, they say, I really don't want a butler. It's not what I want. And, of course, it's only if you request it. So um, you don't have to have the butler, but it's certainly there for the Twin Balcony Suites and the owner's suite. So um, if you want to get your shoes shined and a few shirts ironed and um, maybe some drinks, then that's actually a welcome drink when you get to get onto the cruise. We've also got for everybody in the cabins a royal experience. So basically, if you're on one of our cruises, you'll certainly get all of this included. So the signature experiences, and I'll show you through some of those, but it really is one of those special moments on your cruise that you go back and you say, I imagine doing, you know, maybe going to the Moulin Rouge in Paris and those sort of things. So we'll go into more detail of those in a moment. We've also got the freedom of choice inclusions, which I really like because all the must-see things are included. But when you've got freedom of choice touring, it's more, I guess, what you're interested in. So if you go into, um, into maybe Vienna, you can go into the Spanish riding school if you love your horses. If you want to see Chandon Palace, which is quite amazing as well, and see where Mozart did his first performance. I think he's about seven years old, so obviously you're incredibly talented. Then you can actually go to Chandon Palace as one of your freedom of choice inclusions. There's so much to look at and see to choose, and that's included for you. Of course, drinks are always part of your um, your bill when you actually check off the cruise. And with APT, we actually include your beverages while cruising. So you have your local beers, your local wines, and they're lovely wines in the Rhine region as well. And the beers are fantastic. And, um, of course, you have spirits as well. So if you want to have a vodka and orange, that's included in your um, actual cruise price. So it really does cut back on a lot of spending. Your soft drinks are included as well, and of course your juices, as well as bottled water in your cabin. So you're not paying additional for those sort of things, and they do add up over a couple of weeks as well. And of course, thank goodness, we got our chances on the first and last day, and we just find our passengers like to make it really, really easy. They don't want to have stress from when they leave Perth. They basically get on the plane. As soon as they get into Europe, we have one of the APT representatives pick up from the airport, organise everything, take your luggage and they'll actually deposit you straight at either at the uh, hotel if you're doing maybe Paris or Prague add-on and um, make sure your luggage gets sorted out and um, otherwise if you're going to the ship of course straight to the ship. I also should mention for the um, the land stays all of your um, concierge tipping is also included for APT so you don't have to worry about when they bring your bags up to your room that's sorted out by your tour director as well. If you want to, that's a big thing for Australians. I think so because we hate tipping. <laughs> we, I, don't, I don't think we mind the money. It's more the awkwardness. We're not, it's not part of our culture, so we just say, okay, we'll make sure that's all included. So we're actually doing the cruise with APT. We tip your cruise director, all of your staff, and also your local guides as well. So that's handled for you by APT. So you don't have to worry about that. We just say, you know, thank you very much for the information you've given us, and they're happy because the tour director's already tipped them. So um, you don't have to feel awkward at all. If you want to extend as well into maybe if you want to go a couple of days beforehand or extend your trip at the end, if you book your accommodation through us as well, we also include the transfers. 
So um, makes it really easy. So if you may be going after the ship, maybe if you say I'm just doing the Amsterdam Budapest and you want to do a couple of nights in Budapest just to have a look at that fantastic city, you can actually um, with APP have the transfer from the ship to your hotel and your hotel to the airport included. So just make sure when you're speaking to, um, to John and the guys and the team, just say please book all of those accommodations with APP and we can sort it for you easily. Tipping, as you That's mentioned. A big thing too. I think That's a big thing, Joe, because uh, the, uh, a lot of clients, uh, it's pretty confusing when you arrive into uh, Heathrow and the various airports that you can arrive into and then working out what do I do, where do I go, and knowing that the APT people are there to hold your hand. It, it allows you to do what a holiday is all about, in my opinion, and that's relax. Exactly. All the way through. Yeah. You don't have to worry about your budgets. You don't have to worry about tipping. You don't have to worry about getting from anywhere to anywhere. You just got to get off the plane. And that's that's about the sum total of your participation. It's, it's so simple. And I think after about, well, 15 to 21 days, depending on which, um, which itinerary you choose, you become so relaxed. And all of a sudden, you sort of, you finished your, your cruise and you're like, oh my God, I have to go home now because I've, my brain's not working anymore. I'm so relaxed. Everyone's been looking after me so well and um, everything's so well organised. It's sort of like a shock to the system sometimes. So I always say to people, if they're going to see their relatives and friends on the part of their actual holiday, maybe do that at the start and then relax completely on the cruise before you go home because it's just a really nice, nice way to sort of return to Australia nice and relaxed. And we got, you probably hopefully got um, some brochures or the e-brochures off our internet, but um, with our APT, we've actually got two different choices of ships. We have the ARIA class, which were launched in 2006 and 2009, and they're well known for just mainly their um, panoramic balcony style, or they could also be called French balconies. Uh, three different restaurants on board as well, and a heated whirlpool on the top deck. And um, really nice size, about 148 guests on board. So really, really nice. You get to know all the, you know, the main people and um, enjoy their company. We then got some feedback from passengers that have maybe done a, you know, Holland America cruise or a Princess cruise. They said, I like to have a balcony, an actual step out balcony. So what we've actually got is the concerto ships, which were a little bit newer. And with these ones, we've actually got a more choice of suites and more choice of restaurants. We've actually different seven different dining experiences on board, which is great if you've got, you know, your wow. 15 days. And so you're never really going to get bored. <laughs> and um, five specialty restaurants on board these ships. So really, really great choice. Beautifully done. A little bit longer. So a little bit longer as far as the ships are concerned, but um, a little bit more to choose from. So these have been really popular as well as the pool on the top deck, especially if you go to Europe in summer. You can think you're cruising along the Rhine or the Rhone and um, you're swimming in the pool and, um, yeah, looking at the castles in the background. So um, a really nice experience. This just gives you an idea of some of the general regions around the ship. So even if you're doing like one of the leading cabins, which is still a good size, you've still got some fantastic areas throughout the ship where you can actually get perfect views. We actually sit on the sun deck and it's 360 degree views. You've got the um, fireside library as well. And there's all the books about Europe and where you're cruising through. They've got a fitness centre. One day I'll find someone in there. John, I've never seen anybody in there. But um, one I've day... I've told no one's ever been in there except the cleaners. Yeah, I think so. That's pretty much it. Everyone else is out there maybe enjoying enjoying Europe instead, I suppose, rather than being in a gym. But it's there for sure. Uh, you've also got the elevator as well to make it easy to go through the different levels of the ship. And heaps of lounges. And the lounges have got those great um, pod coffee machines. They can decide exactly how you like your coffee done. And they've always got snacks as well. Um, so they've always got something to eat no matter when you wander into the lounges. The um, cruise directors are amazing on board as well and they um, they really make sure that everything goes according to plan as far as the actual itinerary. So I don't think they ever sleep. They're always actually talking with the guests and also having um, meals with the guests as well, which is great. So if you have any questions, you can certainly go up to the cruise director and I'll be able to help you and give you some advice. We've had people that um, maybe run out of their medications and they need to go into a chemist and the cruise director always goes with them to make sure there's no issue with um with language and you know conversions things like that as well as um mm -hmm. we had one guest who actually um dropped their wallet in a um well they're doing an actual seaplane they actually dropped their wallet into the um into the harbour and um which is an absolute disaster when you're overseas but um the cruise director got a um one of the scuba divers to go down and get the wallet thank goodness so um 
it actually in a credit card still works. Yeah, so these things all make such a difference, but um, they're great people and really do everything they can. There we are. That's where you actually check in for your cruise. So you've on the left hand side is your um reception area. It's twenty four hours a day. It's manned. So any anything that comes up any time of the day or night, you can certainly go to the reception area and they'll be able to give you a hand. As you can see, the lift through there as well. It takes you through the different levels of, of the ship. And that is your lounge area. So a lot of the briefings happen here. Also the um, the lectures as far as history and the culture that you're cruising through, as well as uh, in the evening, they'll actually have a um, musician there as well. So just before dinner, they'll have a musician in here with some nice music. And usually after dinner, they'll have the local entertainers from the villages come through and do some folk dancing, singing. Um, sometimes they have a trio of musicians. So all that sort of thing from the, from the general town that you're cruising through. So it, Gives that flavour of the village, which is fantastic. And there's there's three of them there that actually come in from the town. Butler services. Are different people on different nights, do they, Joe? Yeah, every every uh, performance is different. So you have the main musician that's on the ship all the way through, who do usually mainly pre-dinner music. But um, the ones that actually come in after dinner are from the local town. So they pretty much go in, come in for one night. And off they go back to their town and then we cruise on to the next town and get some different entertainers. So there's always something on in the evening. And there's our bikes, which are great. I really enjoy it. We have some passengers come along and say, I haven't been on a bicycle for, you know, 15 years or so. And uh, they have a great time. They um, end up going the separate cycle paths around a lot of the um, little European towns are fantastic. So you can certainly do those. Otherwise, you've also got a, an area from Milk to Dernstein, which spans over 20 kilometres, actually, but you have the whole day to actually do the cycle between the two towns and um, really relaxing, right. beautiful areas that you go through and some tiny little villages that you really feel like you're very much in the heart of Europe. And um, they also can't speak English quite often, so it's entertaining going and getting a coffee um, through these villages. And, of course, you've got a, um, a guide behind because there's about 15 wineries between the two towns. So I want to make sure no one sort of stops there for a few hours and uh, and misses a ship in the next town. So that's between Milk and Dernstein. This is the only place where you actually spend some money, John. So if you actually want to get a massage done or maybe get your hair done for a special occasion, uh, you can certainly come into the um, beauty salon and book in a treatment or something like that for yourself. So that's the only thing that's not included in the actual cruise price, one of the main things anyway. And these are our suites. This is probably the main question we get asked as far as what is the difference between the suites. These ones are 170 square feet inside, so really, really comfortable. We've got a pillow menu as well. So if you're fussy with your pillow, you can certainly get the pillow that suits you for your two-week cruise. Uh, dream bed mattresses, so really, really comfy. You've got a, um, a safe in your room, which I really like. So you can walk in first day, put any valuables, uh, lock those away so you don't have to worry about that for two weeks. You've also got free internet access, which is another thing that a lot of people don't think about when they go overseas and they want to check in and update their friends about their progress. Uh, with APT, it's free internet, so um, that's a big difference. So you can log in, hotmail, and send your pictures back and um, share your, so I guess all your journeys and things with your friends at home. We've also got an Australian plug in front of that little chair there on the left-hand side. You've actually got an Australian plug there. So if you get your European adapter, you can actually use that one there, and that's quite easy. You've also got heaps of covered space on the left-hand side, which you can't really see from this photo, and a private ensuite as well. And in the ensuite, you've actually got a full-size shower. We don't have any shower over baths, which are not too popular with our passengers, and um, really nice with you know marble table tops and things like that. So really nicely done. As far as the levels of this one, this would be on the lower deck, on the piano deck. So this is probably for people that say, I really don't need a view because I'm never in my cabin. It doesn't matter to me. So um, I just need the main amenities and that's it. These are exactly the same size. Even though they look massive, they actually look quite a bit larger. It's mainly because you've got that full panoramic balcony style there, which is really, really popular. You find most people that do river cruising like this style because they can sit there and just before going maybe for dinner, open those windows and really enjoy the view of Europe as you're cruising along. And I thought I'd throw this shot in there as well for you, John. It's mainly to show you why we have to, we are limited as far as width. 
badly. So we've only got about half a metre on each side of the ship to actually make it through the locks. Um, and there's over over 40 locks between Amsterdam to Budapest. So we certainly have to get through all of these. That's why we just want to make sure that the internal space is, you can make the most of it. Um, and as you can see, the previous shot there with the panoramic balcony, even if you're going in March or October, November, December, when it could be a bit more rainy, if you just close those doors, you've still got your internal space. If you had a step up balcony, there'd be a lot of space here you couldn't use on those plants. So that's why I've done that sort of style. Yeah, what I like about the window side of things is I, on an Alaskan cruise, I've, been, I've done a couple and on one of them was actually a particularly wet cruise and we had the balcony and yeah. we literally did just sit inside and look at the scenery uh, with it raining outside and it, it was really great. We didn't have to go up on deck, we didn't have to go out amongst everybody, we could read a book and even people would come back. Uh, there's a bit of a myth out there, people say, oh, you yeah, only sleep in your cabin but you don't I mean you, you know, late in the afternoon it's nice to just get up and if you're not out and about to sit around and just take it easy and not have to get formally dressed or prepared you can sit in your dressing gown if you want to and even in the mornings it's always nice to open a window in the morning and see where you are and, and you know what's what the scenery might be so I say to people you know the balconies are you know, if you can bring it into your budget it's not even a, you'll never regret it. Absolutely. No one's ever come back and say, I wish I didn't have a balcony. Yeah, so true, absolutely. And um, going up from, from that level, you can even go larger if you want, John. So you've actually got the, um, this is just on the um, concerto style ships. So this is your twin balcony style. So as you can see on the right hand side, you've still got those um, sliding doors, but on the left hand side, you've actually got a step out balcony, which is covered. But, um, and so I guess you've got the best of both worlds. So if you're cruising in, you know, in summer, it'd be beautiful, it'd be on the left-hand side. Otherwise, if it's a bit cooler, you can go on to the right-hand side there and um, have more of that conservatory-style feel, but still have that fantastic view. So, Joe, um, yeah, just that's... a quick question. Yeah. Is there a better side of the ship to be on, depending on which way you are going? There's or not, that probably... just doesn't matter? It doesn't matter, to be honest. A lot of people have asked, and I've sort of done both sides of the ship, and I didn't really find a difference because the towns can be on either side of your ship as you're cruising along. So I'd say really probably the best view you get is on the sun deck because either side you're always going to miss out on something. Uh, but there was definitely not a better side on the starboard or the port as far as river cruising. So at least you don't have to worry. It's not like um, doing maybe Alaska when there's one side where you actually can see the towns and the other side where you probably mm. wouldn't. So in river cruising, it doesn't really, it's not a big factor for sure. I should cool. thank you. That's all right, no dramas. And also with the um, the actual previous shot, I should mention the size as well. These ones range from 210 square feet up to 235 square feet to give you an idea. So a little bit larger than our, our, um, our lead-ins at 170 square feet. This is your owner's suite. And I have this, the pictured one here is the owner's suite plus that's 350 square feet in size. So really, really large for a river cruise ship. But um, certainly if you have friends coming over of maybe for some pre-dinner drinks, they'll definitely be using your cabin for those. So um, mm. really great size, great um, balconies you can see and um, really beautifully fitted out as well. And also the bathrooms are beautiful with twin vanities. I don't know, there we are. There's a shot of the um, bathroom as well. Separate shower and separate bath as well. I noticed that the people in the um, pictures are, are probably models or the likes as they actually are, but I, I'm noting the dress standard. We often get asked the question about what is the dress standard um, that people need to consider. We always say just smart, casual, and you'll fit in very well for every aspect of it. Would you agree with that or do you have some other input? Definitely. I think it's very much like, because especially it's in a, um, mainly for Australians as well, I think we're a pretty casual bunch as well, especially as being a small group. So exactly what you see the models wearing would be fine throughout the day. I always say um, those comfortable walking shoes are really important. I find that um, also those fleecy jackets, John, are quite handy because they're easy to pack and they're quite light. Um, so you can take those out when you're actually doing your touring. So if it gets a bit cooler, then you can pop those on. I just find sometimes people sometimes bring those thermals, but because the ship's beautifully um, organised as far as the temperature control, um, 
often you get inside the ship and it's too hot because you've got thermals on underneath everything else. So I just find layers are a really good way to go. Um, also, little brollies, because we yep. actually build brollies in every cabin, so but they're quite large ones. So if you want to take one of those little um, tiny little portable ones from home, you can definitely put that into your bag. So when you're actually doing your touring or having your free time in town, they're a little bit easier to actually take around the towns with you in your bag. So they're really handy. We have two formal nights on the ship, and that's the only time where you actually need anything such as like a cocktail dress, and it is just cocktail attire. For, for the gentlemen, if they don't want to wear a tie, they don't have to, which is very popular. Often they just wear a shirt and a jacket and, and some trousers and they're completely fine. So it's not, you know, wearing a tuxedo or anything like that, which you'd get on some of those big ships out of America. That also gives you a breakdown there for every suite, exactly what's included. And I, did, I don't think I mentioned the entertainment system. So you've got your internet, you've also got your music and you've also got your um, English speaking channels and movies on that system. And you've also got um, individual climate control in every cabin. So very, very nice, very, very comfortable. And we've got no sweets over engine because as soon as you have that sort of thing, you end up with a bit of vibration. And you don't want to have your, you know, your trip of a lifetime and have vibration in the cabin. It would ruin the whole thing for sure. And we've been talking about food, John. <laughs> so um, it's fantastic food on board. Very nicely done. If you have any dietary requirements, certainly let um, one of our actually let your travel agent know first and then when you get onto the ship the um the actual waiters will make sure you don't have any dietary requirements but if you do they'll make sure that they um they watch out for you and make sure that maybe it's gluten free or whatever they'll certainly look after your needs in that regard as well and that's all our choice of food so you're never going to be hungry they've got things like cooking demonstrations they can bring some uh, fantastic recipes back from europe wine tasting and tasting some wines that we don't have um, so much in Australia, which is a really nice thing to do as well. Uh, of course, the morning and afternoon tea, just for a snack, so you get addicted to the different scones and things like that, as well as all the flavours of Europe as you're cruising along, you know, all three different uh, river systems and five different countries. So really beautifully done. We're also um, really happy to be the only river cruising company inducted into um, one of the French culinary societies. So basically, because I recognise how fantastic quality our food is they said we can actually be involved in that as well so really really proud of that award and our choices so I think it'd be really nice on the bottom left hand corner there you can see just an alfresco lunch so that'd be a really nice way to sit on that uh, sun deck and just have a look at the castles in the background as you're cruising from the Rhine we also have the main dining room on the right hand side as well and then on the right at the bottom of the page you've actually got a Libanus restaurant we'll show you some more shots of that but that's fantastic and one thing I like about our dining experiences is there's no surcharges so no matter what restaurant you want to go into it's still including your cruise price so you don't have to pay additional for anything and if you have a special occasion for a wedding and an anniversary a birthday certainly book in for that evening at a Libanus restaurant and it's very much a fine dining experience. There's three entrees, one main and three desserts. And all of the wine is tailored to the food that you're enjoying as well. And as you can see, the chefs are creating all your meals behind you. So it's a great experience. It's the back of the ship. And so if they open those curtains up, maybe if you're in Budapest, you're cruising along with the Knights of Budapest and um, enjoying a beautiful meal. So that's really very much a special occasion. And there they are waiting to, uh, to welcome you on board and make sure you have a great evening there. Some more food. I hope you've had breakfast, lunch or dinner so far, John. But, um, yeah, it's fantastic food, very good steaks in Europe as well. And um, they are make sure that you have it exactly the way that you like it. One thing that's brand new for our whole... You're getting dear to my heart. You know? <laughs> it's very important to have. I think even well fed is a massive part of cruising for sure. I love my food. Yeah. And no, no clients, no clients have come back yet and complained that the food was too much, or well, not so much too much. No, they come back and said there was plenty, but plenty. everybody has been highly complimentary of the food, and and they like the uh, the no surcharge dining experiences. Like people who have done river ocean cruises, you will know that, and are used to having to pay anywhere up to even a hundred dollars to go in and have one of these uh, select restaurants. Uh, meals. So the good thing about on your ship is the fact that you get to go and then all you have to do is book. Absolutely. When should they book? You know? <laughs> what, what's your advice there? 
I would say as soon as they actually get on board the ship, uh, when they're actually checking in, just mention that the um, the certain date, which is special occasion or whichever one they prefer, because they can go at least twice during the cruise to the Lidness restaurant. So um, whichever dates they prefer, just mention it at a time of check-in and we'll be able to um, pop a note into their booking that they'd like to go on that evening and book them in. So that's easily done. One other thing that we have brand new, which is um, for the whole fleet for next year, is the River Bistro. And it's, I just like it because you actually get extra flexibility with it. So it's another dining experience. It's open from 10 a.m. till 12 p.m. at night. So if you're in town and you've had your tour and then you think, well, I want to have a bit of free time, but after maybe a couple of hours, lunch is due, you can say, look, I'll continue on and you know, spend four hours maybe in town, wander back and go into the River Bistro and have what you want. If you want to have your, you know, your steak sandwich or your you know, gourmet wrap or whatever, you can certainly have that. So to me, it gives you more flexibility as far as your touring rather than having to be dictated when you have to go back to the ship to, you know, not miss out on lunch or afternoon tea, all those sort of things. So it's, um, yeah, very excited to have that new feature on board our ships for next year. Wow. As I mentioned, yeah, we are all the wines of Europe. So it's nice to try some of the different reds and whites in Europe as well. So we certainly have those throughout the ship. And it's great to do the touring as well. As you can see, Michelle there with one of our um, Amadante signs. And they are all colour-coded, as I mentioned before, as well. The lady, you can't actually see, but she's actually got a voice box headset as well. So she can easily walk away from the group. The group size is usually around 30 people on average that do the local tours. And um, you can wander off from the tour, still get the commentary, and then rejoin the group, and you haven't missed out on anything. So um, it's really, really handy. And you sort of have a wander through at your own pace. There's another one of our guys. Sorry, I'm just saying it certainly adds to uh, being able to listen to the the guide because at the end of the day, you haven't got all that good a hearing or you can't get in close because there may be this crowd due to what the attraction is. You're in a situation where you actually miss out on the benefit of it. So these uh, speaker things are, are brilliant. They're fantastic. As you can see on this picture on the second couple, you can actually see they've got the voice box headsets there as well. So they've been really, really popular. And I think um, people really enjoy the flexibility of those as well. We'll be able to wander a little bit further away from the guide and they'll always be so close if they need to. And that gives you an idea of all the different towns and cities we're actually offering the freedom of choice inclusion. So when you actually get to one of the brochures, It'll go through all the different choices we've got, but to me it saves us so much money when you actually look through all these different places where you can have all these different experiences throughout. As I mentioned, Vienna, you know, Schumann Palace and the Spanish Riding School. There's so much to choose from, and um, it's nice to have the transfers included for those options as well, so they're all included with APT, which is, yeah, really, really positive. We also do some land journeys as well, which I didn't mention before. So it's really handy if you want to see maybe Italy or Croatia before doing the Magnificent Europe cruise. Uh, also, if you want to do Scandinavia, there's so many different options you can actually do and do basically land first and then cruise second. So we never make you do the um, the cruise first and then, and then do a land journey. So you just make sure you're relaxing at the end on your cruise. So there is other bits and pieces you can certainly do that combine with your actual river cruise. Yeah, our clients are telling us that they prefer to do the land arrangement first because you know, inevitably there's hotels, traffic, hustle bustle, everything that goes with it, and then literally wind down on the river cruise and and you sort of reflect back on your your experiences that you've had, and you know you can sort photos and, and almost prepare yourself for when you get home and. That seems to be the uh, preferred way. I'm not, I'm not saying it's the only way, but it's certainly the way that some clients are giving us the feedback on it. It seems to work out quite well. It makes a lot of sense. I think so. And it's just nice to sort of do all the stuff you have to do on the running around first, which is, you know, when, you, when there's no river system, sadly, and we can't do it that way, then obviously we'll do, try to do as many two night stays or three night stays as we can. But, you know, we've also got to make sure that it's, um, you know, looking after people's budgets at the same time. So we do that touring first and then get onto your river cruise, unpack, and then you're done really pretty much for the next two weeks. So, um, yeah, it's a nice way to go and then sort of relax and then have all those wonderful meals as well. Everyone comes back and blames us as far as, um, I think, putting on weight. But, um, but also at least the good thing about Europe, I think, is the fact that there is quite a bit of walking. 
And um, so you do get quite a good opportunity for a good bit of exercise walking around those cobblestone streets and things around Europe. So it's not as bad as Canada, I can promise you now. Brand new right. for next year. We've actually got a um, the Royal Tour, and that's literally. So you actually um, get invited into Princess Hyder's home. And so you can meet her aide, see what it's like with the working castle and what goes on there and exactly how far is her appointments and how an actual working castle runs. And then in the evening, you actually have a royal banquet as well. So a really great experience. We tried it on guests this year to make sure that it would be what our guests expect. And they all came back and said it was absolutely amazing, one of the highlights of their cruise. So when we actually meet Princess Heidi, she's part of German and the Russian royal family. And if she's there as well, she'll come down and meet you as well. So fingers crossed she'll be there. But we're exclusive to APT, so it's something a little bit different to do. And it's in Germany, so it would be a great experience to do. And everyone guaranteed that experience on APT. Also, when you get to Hungary, we've also got the State Opera House in Budapest. We've got a private music recital just for our guests on board our ship. So that would be great. You're standing there and um, some of the musicians appear on stage. We have a glass of champagne and um, a complete recital just for our guests. So that's another signature experience at APT Guarantee. A different again, <laughs> we've actually got the Oktoberfest. No matter what time of the year you go with APT, we'll recreate the Oktoberfest feeling. So those long wooden benches. All oh, right. <laughs> I think you'd love it, John, the um, the massive beers. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's a newbie to me. <laughs> It'd be good. I've always regretted that I never got to the Oktoberfest, actually. Everybody I know almost has been. So I suppose there'd be a few uh, older people that are, or people that are my age and likes on this tour as it was. Go, oh, I remember back in 1975. <laughs> Absolutely. And they've got the, um, you know, the massive beers and you've got the Bavarian, you know, folk music and dancing and things like that. So that that's always good fun. So we include that on all of the cruises as well. So another signature experience. And, of course, you're going to the south of France and you certainly want to get in, more involved in the winemaking. And uh, with this one, you're actually going to a family-run winery as well in the Beaujolais region. So, hey John, back again. I just wanted to say thanks for sticking around. Now we're down to what we call the meat and potatoes. We've got all of the entree, everything served up for you. You've got, I hope, a really good idea now what's involved in the Magnificent Europe. Yeah. Joe's done a great job explaining everything, and we're just about to cover off the deals. But I want to qualify two things, probably, when it comes to the deals. First of all, it's July 2013. And these deals are available at this point. They change and can be updated at any time. So please only use these as a guide and contact us to find out exactly what's happened. Secondly, we've actually got some special deals for people who are able to have a bit of flexibility in when you want to go in terms of the timing because we actually get some special unadvertised deals. But I urge you to contact us after this video at the bottom of the phone number that we'll have there. So right now, we're gonna cover it over to Joe. She's gonna cover off what's available now and give you guys some idea of what's happening. Thank you. We've actually got a fly free, uh, and that one's actually paying your own air taxes with that French balcony or the panoramic balcony style ship. So that's very, very popular is having one of those. And that's on the RA class ships, and that's available to the 31st of October, 2013. Uh, for 2014, to give you an idea, we're about 50% sold out for peak dates already, which is a bit frightening, but people have been very, very organised. And I think when you look at it around the 75 to 78 cabins per sailing, there's not that much. So um, really, I guess it doesn't take much to sell them out. We've also got another deal if they actually want to have their taxes included. So fly free, both passengers, including taxes. If you go the leading cabins, that will be for the Magnificent Europe. That's fly free throughout the, the year with um, your tax included, so a big saving. Or if you want to go in March, October, November, December, in any category cabin, you'll get that deal as well. So really going those shoulder seasons as far as not as many people in Europe, not as popular, certainly not peak of summer, but at the same time, it's a different experience and going when it's a bit quieter is always attractive. So maybe March, October, November, December, in any category cabin, you can get your fly free. We usually do our fly free with Singapore Airlines and that's always been very, very popular. Great service airline and um, really look after our guests really well. One question we get asked all the time as far as doing those flights is, can we go a little bit earlier and stay on a little bit longer if they want to? And that's not a drama at all. 
what we can actually do, a lot of people go and see their relatives in the UK first. And so we actually fly them into London instead. And then they can do their, you know, visit their relatives. The travel agent usually gets their own um, book supply from maybe London or from wherever in, in the UK to Amsterdam. And then they can re rejoin their first day of the cruise. So then they continue on and then we fly them out of Budapest. So it's really, really flexible. You can extend on the beginning at the end and you can also fly out of different gateways that Singapore Airlines offer in Europe as well. So really, really flexible. So make the most out of your trip. It's a long way to go. Make sure you actually enjoy Europe as much as you can and see people or do extra things. And they've got some companion fly freeze as well. So with um, like you guys basically have got all of the brochures there and I'm sure you've got details on your internet site so they can actually log on, have a look at the deals and obviously ring yourself or Nilla and get all the information as far as which tour they're looking at, what deal they're actually um, eligible for and see how they can make that work for their, their plans. But hopefully that's given you a pretty much a general rundown as far as everything. I think we've answered a lot of the questions as we've actually gone through, actually gone to be honest, as far as what to pack, what's not included, the better side of the ship and, you know, extending your stay. So we've actually gone through quite a few. Anyway, thanks so much, John, for um, for jump, jumping onto the webinar and hopefully we've given you some information. And um, if your passengers or your clients would like further information, certainly yourself and Nilla would be the best people to come and speak to. I know you're off soon on a river cruise in Europe as well as Vietnam. So thanks so much. Well, there we are. Thanks so much, Joe, and thank you for coming along and watching our presentation. Our goal today was to provide you with the best research information we could on river cruises so that you can be in a position where you feel comfortable about making a really good informed decision, even if it means not taking a river cruise. I guess what you need to do now is spend a bit of time digesting what you've taken in, and perhaps if you've got time, it's worth going back through our website, besteuropeanrivercruises.com.au, and looking at the 43 frequently asked questions. Another link that I'm gonna share here with you now is our YouTube channel. We have 73 videos on there, more than 59,000 views at this date. So there's a lot of really good information there to still help you if you're still at that stage where you're researching and you're not quite sure yet what you want to do. Of course, if you're looking for some guided help and you want some expertise, then you know how to get hold of us and we'll be happy to help you in any way we can. So once again, thanks for coming along. Thanks to you, Joe, and I appreciate the opportunity to be able to share in your river cruise planning experience.